It was called Bucking Ice, and in 1909 it was one of those things that vessel managers either loved or loathed. For some it was the best way to get the earliest start on the shipping season, and for getting the earliest income as well. For others it was too great a risk, as ice damage can cost hull plates, time, and profit. Spring storms and leftover winter ice can be a huge risk even today, and in 1909 the risk was far greater. Of course, some shipping companies started early, being fully willing to risk their vessels and their crews just to get that first cargo of the season. The season of 1909 officially began on April 15th which was the day that the insurance companies had set for their coverage to begin. In Buffalo, New York, the 364-foot ore boat Urania was being fit out. After the boat had spent the winter layup at Tiff's farm, management now had an eye on an April 20th clearing for the first trip of the season. Launched on Saturday, August 31st, 1895 in Chicago, Illinois, the Urania was the pride and joy of vesselman James Corrigan, who owned the boat. This shrewd businessman was looking toward the economic recovery of the iron ore business following the Panic of 1893. The new boat would operate under the management of James Corrigan's brother, Captain John Corrigan. Under his supervision, she was launched as the largest steel, quote, schooner, unquote, on the lakes. Captain Corrigan's daughter, Etta, was picked to smash the champagne bottle across the stem of the new barge and christen her Arania. Before it slid down the ways, the little girl raised the bottle high, poised to swing it. Launch manager Babcock gave her the signal to swing away. She smashed the bottle. The lines were axed. The huge steel schooner barge was waterborne and the Corrigan family celebrated. Just five years later, both John and James Corrigan would have their families nearly wiped out by an angry Lake Erie. While cruising aboard the family's sailing yacht, a sudden summer squall capsized the luxury vessel. Etta was washed overboard and swallowed by Lake Erie, along with a half dozen other members of the family. On its maiden voyage in mid-September of 1895, the barge Arania set the record for the largest cargo ever carried on the lakes. 4,400 tons of iron ore loaded at Duluth. At a cost of just under $130,000, Corrigan had gotten exactly what he wanted, a cheap, bare-bones vessel to carry huge cargoes. She broke records continuously for the rest of 1895 and all through 1896. Interestingly, although the Arania truly did not have the full ability to navigate the lakes by way of what meager sails she actually had, Inland Lloyds listed her as, quote, a schooner in their 1895 register. In the 1896 register, that was changed to a, quote, barge. Yet many maritime publications and newspapers still often referred to her as a schooner. Often towed by one of Corrigan's wooden steamers, the Arania served well in that capacity until 1898. It was about then that Corrigan made plans to convert the barge into a powered steamer. In 1899, the Detroit Dry Dock Company offered to do the conversion by adding a triple expansion steam engine, and two boilers, plus an expanded deck house for just $50,000. This added up to Corrigan having a 5,000 ton ore boat with only an estimated investment of about $170,000. A new vessel of the same size, the same equipment in 1900 from the Detroit Dry Dock Company would have cost him or anyone else $320,000. Thus, he had himself a very cheap boat and a very high profit margin. As the 1909 season opened, 
It would be the first time since the 1860s that the Great Lakes maritime industry would be without James Corrigan. He died on Christmas Eve 1908 at his home located at 1184 Euclid in Cleveland from an ongoing case of peritonitis, which had struck him the previous September. His fleet, his iron ore mines, and his company, Corrigan and McKinney, however, was still intact. Fitting out for that season were the Corrigan boats Australia, Polynesia, Amazon, and Arania. All of which were former Corrigan steel barges that had been converted into inexpensive steamers in the same manner. Arania cleared Buffalo Harbor on April 21, 1909 to open her season. Upbound with a cargo of coal for the port of Superior, Wisconsin, she encountered very little ice on the way up to the Sioux Locks. Locking upbound at 1.30 on Sunday afternoon, April 25th, she was slightly delayed by a huge blockade of vessels waiting for ice to clear on Whitefish Bay. Many of those boats were under orders not to buck ice. So their master simply rafted their fleet mates together and waited. Captain Pringle of the Urania, however, was under no such restriction. Normally, in order to buck ice, a steamer has to be running without cargo and then flying trimmed with ballast. That allows the hull to ride up onto the ice sheet and then the boat's weight simply crushes the ice. The Urania, however, was running fully loaded and so had no alternative other than to simply ram the ice. Captain Pringle's logic was probably that no matter how little headway his boat made in the ice, he would still be ahead of the crowd upbound and waiting at the Sioux. Leaving the blockade boats behind, the Arania crunched her way along the frozen St. Mary's River. The ice wasn't too bad, but it was slow going. She got as far as Point Aupon, which some people will look at and call ox pins, when the ice coming down shoved the Arania aground. Through some backing and wiggling, the boat was able to free herself and again proceed to crunch her way upbound. This time she got as far as Point Iroquois, when a furious northwest gale came up. Captain Pringle elected to shelter behind Isle Parisienne, and so he altered his course to the east. The storm, however, started to drive the ice packs toward the east and effectively blocked the Arrhenius Passage. Off Grocap, the winds appeared to work in the boat's favor, and a large crack opened in the ice pack. It led toward Isle Parisienne, so Captain Pringle decided to use it. They made pretty good progress before the ice again closed in on them, and the boat crunched to a halt. From Sunday evening until Wednesday evening, the Arania sat there, trapped in the ice. While they were trapped, Captain Pringle had his first mate go down and examine the boat's forepeak and make sure there was no damage. The mate found everything in good shape. On Wednesday evening, the winds shifted around and began blowing out of the southeast. That started shoving the ice pack holding the Arania toward Isle Parisienne. Not wanting to be grounded again, Captain Pringle started working the boat free and heading to the west. They were making good progress when suddenly they came upon the worst ice flow they'd encountered so far, and the Arania was again stopped dead in her tracks. Once more, the mate checked the forepeak and found the hull to be sound. On Thursday morning, April 29th, it appeared that the ice may be loosing its grip. And as dawn lighted the scene, Captain Pringle began repeatedly backing and ramming the boat in the ice. After a few hours, it was working. And once more, it appeared the Arania was going to make some progress. Then unexpectedly, at 7.30 that morning, as the Arania made one of her stabs at the ice, she took on a list, knowing instinctively that that was not good. Captain Pringle ordered her full astern. That carried her back into the heavy ice as her list continued to grow. 
Now the shoebox construction that had led her to cheaply carry all of those record-breaking cargoes spelled her doom. It was clear the Urania was rapidly sinking. Captain Pringle ordered his crew to the lifeboats as he blew a distress signal on the boat's whistle. The Urania's crew would have to go over the side and onto the ice in order to save themselves. Fortunately, the Urania was not stuck alone in the ice that day. Along with her was the George W. Peavy, Frederick B. Wells, and the J. H. Bartow. The Bartow was the closest, at just about three miles away. The Urania's crew selected the Bartow to hike to across the ice. The crew of the Urania lowered their lifeboat and themselves to the ice and began to hike toward the Bartow, dragging their lifeboat along with them. Should the ice break and form a crack of open water, they could now use that lifeboat to cross back onto the ice and continue walking. Shortly after they departed, the Urania rolled onto her beam to the point where her masts touched the ice and she vanished into the deep. All of her crew reached the Bartow safely, and although the next nearest vessel was about five miles away, Captain Pringle publicly criticized the other boats in the area for not coming to his rescue. In fact, they were all just as stuck in the ice as the Urania had been, and there was no way for them to come to his rescue. Today, the Urania rests in more than 400 feet of water just southeast of Isle Parisienne.